In my judgment, an organic machine new to nature never arises, since it always contains an infinity of organs so that it can express in its own way the whole universe. Indeed, it always contains all past and present times. The present is saturated with the past and pregnant with the future. Philosophy consists mostly of kicking up a lot of dust and then complaining that you can't see anything. The greatness of a life can only be estimated by the multitude of its actions. We should not count the years. It is our actions which constitute our life. He who hasn't tasted bitter things hasn't earned sweet things. A great doctor kills more people than a great general. There are two kinds of truths, those of reasoning and those of fact. The truths of reasoning are necessary and their opposite is impossible. The truths of fact are contingent and their opposites are possible. I do not conceive of any reality at all as without genuine unity. In symbols, one observes an advantage in discovery, which is greatest when they express the exact nature of a thing briefly, and as it were, picture it. Then indeed, the labor of thought is wonderfully diminished. What is love? To be delighted by the happiness of someone, or to experience pleasure upon the happiness of another. I define this as true love. It's easier to be original and foolish than original and wise. Music is a hidden arithmetic exercise of the soul, which does not know that it is counting. We should like nature to go no further. We should like it to be finite, like our mind. But this is to ignore the greatness and majesty of the author of things. Everything that is possible demands to exist. The knowledge which we have acquired ought not to resemble a great shop without order and without an inventory. We ought to know what we possess and be able to make it serve us in need. Take what you need, do what you should, you will get what you want. Nature does not make leaps. When God works miracles, he does not do it in order to supply the wants of nature, but those of grace. If you have a clear idea of a soul, you will have a clear idea of a form, for it is of the same genus, though a different species. In whatever manner God created the world, it would always have been regular and in a certain general order. God, however, has chosen the most perfect, that is to say, the one which is at the same time the simplest in hypothesis and the richest in phenomena. To love is to find pleasure in the perfection of another. I hold that it is only when we can prove everything we assert that we understand perfectly the thing under consideration. 
There are two famous labyrinths where our reason very often goes astray. One concerns the great question of the free and the necessary, above all, in the production and the origin of evil. The other consists in the discussion of continuity and of the indivisibles which appear to be the elements thereof, and where the consideration of the infinite must enter in. The soul follows its own laws, and the body its own likewise, and they accord by virtue of the harmony pre-established among all substances, since they are all representatives of one and the same universe. Every mind has a horizon in respect to its present intellectual capacity, but not in respect to its future intellectual capacity. I also readily admit that there are animals, taken in the ordinary sense, that are incomparably larger than those we know of, and I have sometimes said in jest that there might be a system like ours which is the pocket watch of some enormous giant. Virtue is the habit of acting according to wisdom. Justice is charity in accordance with wisdom. It is necessary to believe that the mixture of evil has produced the greatest possible good. Otherwise, the evil would not have been permitted. It has long seemed ridiculous to me to suppose that the nature of things has been so poor and stingy that it provides souls only to such a trifling mass of bodies on our globe, like human bodies, when it could have given them to all without interfering with its other ends. Although the whole of this life were said to be nothing but a dream, and the physical world nothing but a phantasm, I should call this dream or phantasm real enough, if using reason well, we were never deceived by it. I have said more than once that I hold space to be something purely relative, as time, an order of coexistences as time is an order of successions. Taking mathematics from the beginning of the world to the time when Newton lived, what he had done was much the better half. There is nothing waste, nothing sterile, nothing dead in the universe, no chaos, no confusions, save in appearance. I am convinced that the unwritten knowledge scattered among men of different callings surpasses in quantity and in importance anything we find in books, and that the greater part of our wealth has yet to be recorded.